Hello, how stiff is your foil board? Well, it's not a question that I'd really asked of my own boards the last few years, but of late I've been listening, learning, and I've made a bit of a discovery. So let me talk you through this latest batch of inset boards and see whether I found something you may be missing. So this foil drive malarkey, I've been making these inset boards and they've been getting thin. Thin, lightweight, it brings me a lot of control of, and feel at slowish medium speeds. But foil drive as a discipline is enabling us to get into bigger and bigger waves. And with bigger waves, getting into them earlier, you're finding yourself in situations where your board speed's really, really ramping up. And with that extra board speed comes increased power from the foil, increased weight on the front foot, and the whole loading of the whole system is starting to really go up. And whilst you can tune everything up and, 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 and get it so that things are more stable at the top end, you lose a lot of the bottom end feel as well. So what I'm trying to do is create something with a really, really wide spread of operating conditions. Now, the lack of stability at the top end with the high loadings, that lack of pitch stability, I think it's coming from flex. And I blame Liam and Freddie from this, from the Generic Foiling Podcast. I'd been listening to a lot of their media from the AWSI. Now, the AWSI is a big meeting um, over in the States, which has all of the pro riders, all of the brands. And in their individual chats with the pro riders, they all cited that stiffness of the board was the number one priority, weight was secondary. And this started to, this earworm sort of feed into my own understanding of exactly what um, I was, the troubles that I was having in terms of stability when the loads go up. So I decided to engineer my way out of it. <laughs> and I blame Liam for this. Um, I had a conversation with Liam afterwards about how I could go fixing it. And um, we talked about Ken Adgate and his deep tuttle boxes. And the reason that they use deep tuttle, aside from the fact it's a very solid connection, is that it actually ties the lower and upper lamina of the board together through a giant bolt that's threaded in through the top. So there's no um, sort of wobbling with them. Whereas a traditional uh, foil box is set in PVC in the bottom of the board and rarely are they connected to the top. So you have um, a, a movement, a bridge of foam there, which is going to cause movement. So Liam suggested that, you know, rather than just physically tie it into the top and the bottom like you would do with a deep tuttle foil box, he suggested actually going a step further and creating a full structural reinforced carbon tub between your front foot and the foil mounting service at the back, which incorporates a foil drive. And then from there, put the board over the top. So the tub is your direct physical link to the foil and the board is just there for dressing and volume. It was a good idea. <laughs> so this is what we did. We looked through a few ways of doing it, but Liam actually suggested getting some of this. Now this is a PVC sheet um, sandwiched between two layers of carbon under really, really high pressure. And the thing structurally in that dimension is extremely really, it's really very stiff, but we're using it longitudinally like that. And what we've done is we've created a box set into the blank on either side of the inset like that 
all the way to the front foot and behind the back bolts on the foil plate. Now that creates a complete structural member. It also nicely frames the, the inset box for us too. And on either side of this insert, what we've done is these are the inserts that we use. Now we've put one insert on one side of it and essentially the other insert on the other. So the foil drive box sits in the middle and it's bolted with M8 bolts sandwiched between these two structural members and that what's, that's what prevents any squirreling, any movement of the connection between the top of the foil plate and your front foot. A full solid structural member. It's not relying on the foam in any way, shape or form. It's purely loaded into this and through this tub. Back in the day um, when kite falling was just getting started, I was working with Shinny and he made a fuselage. This is actually one of his ones, but a new one. It's absolutely like an iron girder, the thing. And the reason it's so stiff is that we made one of the original fuselage, which was too thin in this back end. Now that cantilever effect, when you're pushing down on the front trying to keep control, the back of the fuselage was bending. And as we got faster and as we got more confident, we just had runaway explosions. We couldn't control the pitch when things were getting squirrely. So I brought the fuselage back to the workshop and I coated it in some micro balloons, fanned it out a bit, and then I absolutely wrapped the hell out of it with carbon all over the place. It was a big old fat thing by the time I'd finished. But when I took it back out again, the difference that the extra stiffness on the fuselage made was absolutely game-changing. Gone were those high-speed wobbles, those, those uh, oscillations that we couldn't control, and everything solidified up. And this is why the whole stiffness thing kind of started really earworming me. And the difference that this thing made when we, we wrapped it is exactly the same as the difference we did when we tubbed these boards. Stiffness is so important. Stiffness helps you keep control. It gives you the confidence that you need to push and it stops oscillations. Any flex make, means you're out of position and your body will readjust not to the trim but to the flex. And when that trim's re-established, the flex comes back and your trim is completely off again. You haven't retrimmed, you've just retrimmed to the flex. You need to get the flex out of the system. Get the flex out of the system and then you can accurately trim what's going on. And the other thing, when you're out riding, you're not, the water that you're riding through is not smooth, it's not easy. There's water moving everywhere all the time. You've got boils popping up in front of the wave, you know, where the water's getting sucked back. You've also got um, currents flowing through from the water that's trying to re-equalize once the last set has gone through. It's an absolute quagmire of, of uh, currents and, and, and updrafts and, and side currents. Water is not smooth and you need to be able to cut through all that, having any flex into that, it's, the water's gonna hit your hydrofoil, the whole system, and it's gonna force bend into the, situ the situation all the time. Everything's gonna be moving around you, even though you're not. Getting rid of all the flex, getting the board super, super stiff, lets you feel all of those movements in the water. And that's the weird feeling I was getting when I first rode this board. You feel all this water around you moving and it is way noisier than it used to be, but you learn to trust it and to a certain extent, ignore it. But the benefit you, you get is when the loads get really, really high and with the stiffer boards, the stiffer hydrofoils, your ability to sustain high loads like that and high speed and control, it's, it's next level, it's possible, and that's where the riding needs to go for the next chapter of what we're doing. What we've also done to brace the base of the board here to the, the tub section here and the, the base laminate of the board is we've created uh, a bracing plate here. Now, that has meant that we've had to add two more inserts. So there's six of these inserts in this beast 
in order to completely brace it and it's needed. This carbon plate is about 10 layers of carbon thick and it's preformed to every board. And it does take a few more seconds to undo and pull the unit out in order to swap the battery. Now, I'm gonna time this here for you now. I take down to the beach a, an impact driver like this, which makes it super, super fast. And let's see how long it takes. Boom. For the stiffness and performance advantage it brings, that is a no-brainer. And I'm completely used to doing it now. It is a very, very quick and simple operation. And yeah, I, I wouldn't do it any other way. So also a uh, fanboy shout out to the generic foiling podcast, Liam and Freddie, thank you for all that AWSI stuff. It's fascinating, uh, an absolute uh, treasure trove of knowledge, you know, without having access to pro level riders, you don't get the information that um, as sort of small insular groups, um, we all need to push our own personal riding forward. So thank you very much for that. And for all of you who haven't listened to it, I suggest you do. Um, it's a really fantastic way to expand your knowledge and ultimately ability and enjoyment of this whole genre. So that's where we've gone with this latest batch. Um, the whole inset uh, genre for me kind of settled itself. Now I'm really happy with where we are. I can't see any big changes to what this batch really represents. And uh, next year we'll probably see some production boards coming out. As to whether they will embrace the tub technology, I don't know, but they definitely should do. Yeah. I've gone back up in size on my own personal board to 18 and a half inches wide. The um, extra control that the tub gives kind of made the super tiny boards feel a bit pointless really and it's quite nice to actually have a little bit of volume should you need to paddle at home or just sit and chat to your buddies without being up to your neck in water at the back of the brake. But yeah, um, happy days. Um, what a fantastic thing this whole foil assist genre is. And the haters are still hating, but good luck to them because we've had an absolutely stunning season in the water so far, far and I wouldn't have it any other way. So yeah, hope you're still having fun and uh, we'll see you and chat to you again soon, no doubt.